Surviving a nuclear fallout involves a mix of radiation shielding, decontamination procedures, and the creation of improvised fallout shelters. When a nuclear event occurs, high-energy radiation from fallout can be extremely harmful, so one of the first priorities is to limit exposure. Radiation shielding involves placing dense materials between you and the radiation source. Materials such as lead, concrete, or even thick layers of earth can absorb and block gamma rays and neutrons. For instance, a basement or a room with thick, dense walls can serve as a rudimentary shield. How does shielding work? Essentially, these materials reduce the intensity of radiation that passes through them, lowering the dose that reaches you. Decontamination procedures are critical once you have been exposed or have come into contact with radioactive materials. Removing contaminated clothing and washing your skin thoroughly with soap and water can remove a significant portion of the radioactive particles. In some cases, specialized decontamination solutions are used to neutralize or wash away contaminants. For example, if radioactive dust settles on you, promptly showering and changing your clothes can help reduce the risk of internal contamination. What happens if you delay decontamination? The longer radioactive material remains on your skin or is inhaled, the greater the risk of harmful radiation doses and subsequent health effects. Improvised fallout shelters are another key element in surviving a nuclear fallout. A shelter should provide both radiation protection and a barrier against the spread of radioactive dust. Common strategies include using an underground space or constructing a room with heavy, dense materials such as concrete blocks or even stacked furniture and blankets to create a barrier. For example, if you have access to a basement, sealing windows and doors and adding extra layers of insulation with available materials can enhance the protection. In the absence of a pre-built shelter, creating a makeshift shelter in an interior room on the lowest floor of a building, away from windows, can significantly reduce radiation exposure. How effective are improvised shelters? While not as effective as professionally designed bunkers, they can still reduce exposure by a significant factor if constructed with care. Each of these measures, radiation shielding, decontamination, and shelter construction, plays a vital role in minimizing the risks associated with a nuclear fallout. They work best when implemented together as proper shielding can reduce initial exposure, decontamination can remove residual contamination, and a well-constructed shelter can provide long-term protection until it is safe to emerge. Understanding and preparing these elements before an emergency can greatly improve your chances of survival in a nuclear fallout situation. Nuclear fallout consists of radioactive particles released into the atmosphere after a nuclear explosion, posing severe health hazards through ionizing radiation. The radiation from fallout can damage cells and DNA, leading to acute and long-term health issues. Understanding the properties of radiation and its decay over time is crucial for effective survival strategies. And this foundational knowledge helps in planning protective measures against exposure. For instance, after a nuclear event, radioactive dust can settle on surfaces and in the air, increasing the risk of internal contamination if inhaled or ingested. It's like a layer of invisible, harmful glitter that clings to everything around you. If not removed or shielded against, it slowly causes damage over time. Radiation shielding involves using materials that absorb or block ionizing radiation, thereby reducing exposure. Dense materials like lead, concrete, or even thick layers of earth are effective at slowing or stopping radioactive particles, and the effectiveness of a shield depends on its thickness, density, and the type of radiation it encounters. Applying these principles helps design safe spaces to mitigate radiation risks during fallout. For example, emergency protocols may involve using reinforced concrete walls in shelters to significantly lower radiation levels from external fallout. It's like using a heavy-duty umbrella to block out a downpour. Strong, dense materials serve as barriers to prevent harmful elements from reaching you. Various materials are known for their radiation shielding properties, each with its advantages and limitations. Lead, due to its high density, is excellent for gamma rays, while concrete and earth are more accessible and effective for neutron radiation. The choice of material depends on the type and energy of the radiation, as well as practical considerations such as availability and ease of use. Understanding these materials is key to constructing effective fallout shelter 
shelters and protective barriers. For example, in many emergency plans, layered shielding is recommended, where an outer concrete wall is combined with an inner layer of earth to maximize protection against different radiation types. It's like building a layered cake, where each layer contributes its own flavor and texture, resulting in a more robust and well-protected structure overall. Decontamination involves removing or neutralizing radioactive contaminants from people, equipment, and surfaces. Effective decontamination procedures typically include physical washing, chemical treatments, and careful disposal of contaminated materials, and these methods reduce radiation exposure and prevent the spread of contamination. Regular and thorough decontamination is essential for maintaining safety in fallout-affected areas. For example, following a fallout event, individuals may use soap, water, and specialized decontamination solutions to wash off radioactive dust from their bodies and clothing. It's like scrubbing off stubborn stains from a shirt. Systematic cleaning removes harmful residues and restores the item to a safer, usable condition. Improvised fallout shelters are structures created using readily available materials to provide protection from radioactive fallout. These shelters should incorporate thick, dense barriers to reduce radiation penetration and be located in areas with minimal exposure to contaminated air. Proper design considers both structural integrity and effective shielding even when built quickly in emergency situations, and this approach is critical for immediate survival when conventional shelters are unavailable. For example, in an emergency, people might convert a basement with thick walls into a temporary shelter using additional layers of furniture, earth, or concrete to enhance protection. <laughs> it's like using a sturdy reinforced closet as a temporary safe space during a storm. Although not ideal, it provides essential protection when no other option is available. Medical response to radiation exposure focuses on minimizing damage to the body through prompt decontamination, supportive care, and specific treatments for radiation sickness. Early diagnosis and intervention are critical to mitigating the long-term effects of ionizing radiation on cells and organs, and hospitals may use specialized treatments such as potassium iodide to block radioactive iodine uptake in the thyroid. Ensuring access to immediate medical care is a vital component of fallout survival plans. For example, in a fallout scenario, emergency responders might administer potassium iodide to exposed individuals to reduce the risk of thyroid cancer. It's like applying a protective cream to a sunburn. Immediate treatment can prevent further damage and promote faster recovery. Surviving a nuclear fallout not only involves physical protection, but also psychological preparedness and community support. Stress, anxiety, and uncertainty can impair decision-making and overall health during emergencies. So psychological resilience is fostered through clear communication, planning, and support networks that help individuals cope with the crisis. Building community resilience ensures that collective resources and knowledge are used to support recovery efforts. For example, community workshops and preparedness drills can help people learn how to manage stress and work together effectively during a fallout event. It's like rehearsing a fire drill at school. When everyone knows their role and has practiced their responses, the group can act calmly and effectively during an emergency. After an initial fallout event, long-term recovery involves decontaminating affected areas, monitoring environmental radiation levels, and rebuilding infrastructure. Environmental remediation efforts aim to reduce persistent contamination and restore ecosystems to safe conditions, and ongoing monitoring and adaptive strategies are essential to address residual hazards over time. This phase of recovery is critical for ensuring public safety and facilitating the return to normal life. For example, authorities might implement continuous environmental monitoring and cleanup operations in contaminated zones, gradually reducing radiation levels to safe standards. It's like restoring a garden after a chemical spill. You must carefully remove the contaminants, test the soil, and replant to ensure that the area recovers fully and safely. Integrating nuclear fallout preparedness into daily life involves regular planning practice and education about protective measures and emergency protocols. This proactive approach helps individuals and communities respond effectively when an unexpected event occurs with regular updates to emergency plans and checklists, ensuring that everyone knows how to act during a crisis, thereby reducing panic and improving outcomes. A well-prepared community is better equipped to manage the challenges of a fallout situation and support each other through recovery. For example, families may create and regularly update a comprehensive emergency plan that includes designated safe areas, communication strategies, and decontamination procedures. 
It's like having a well-stocked emergency kit and a practiced fire drill at home. Being prepared for the worst ensures you can respond calmly and effectively when needed. 